And now this new allegation appears to be that these companies are either falsifying information or they are getting the defendant to falsely agree that the information is false when it is true. All right, this is our first major story today. This is kind of interesting. Daniel Robert Warner, Aaron Matthew Kelly, Resabas Muhammad. At all times relevant, Mr. Warner was a lawyer, Mr. Kelly was a lawyer, and Mr. Muhammad was a lawyer. Licensed to practice in Arizona, I think it was all three of them, yes. They were part of a firm called Kelly Warner Law. The firm represents clients in online reputation matters. The firm offers to get libelous content removed from the web. This is, that's prep work. That's prep work. Let's get to the general allegations here. Respondents engaged in the filing of fraudulent and or frivolous lawsuits aimed at removing online criticism of the firm's clients. The filing or fraudulent of frivolous lawsuits follows one or one of two procedural schemes. In the first scheme, a client identifies online criticism such as a negative review or allegations of a scam and hires respondents to remove the criticism from the internet. Respondents compile a list of online criticism and file a defamation suit on behalf of a client alleging the criticism was false and defamatory. Rather than attempting to locate the true originator of the online criticism, respondents fabricate or allow their clients to fabricate a defendant purporting to be the individual who posted the online criticism. Rather than attempting to prove the online criticism is defamatory, respondents fabricate or allow their clients to fabricate an admission from the purported defendant that the online criticism is false. The plaintiff's client then produced a fraudulent stipulation for permanent injunction signed by the purported defendant. The stipulation for injunction states the plaintiff's client and purported defendants agree that the online criticism is false and constitutes defamation. The stipulation further asks the court to enter an order requiring web websites to remove the online criticism or requiring search engines to de-index the online criticism. De-indexing means removing the target web page from the results. Once issued by the court, the injunction is served on such websites as Ripoff Report and search engines such as Google. The real poster of the online criticism is not made aware of the lawsuit. The real poster of the online criticism is not identified and has not stipulated to the removal of the content. In the second scheme, a client identifies online criticism or negative online content and hires respondents to remove the content from the internet. Respondents compile a list and file a defamation suit. The lawsuit alleges the content is false and defamatory, while the content is in fact true and therefore does not meet the standard for defamation. Respondents locate the originator of some or all the content and name the originator as a defendant. Respondents often obtain an admission from the originator defendant that the online content is false, despite respondents and the parties knowing that the content is true. Respondents then obtain a stipulation for permanent injunction signed by the plaintiff client and the defendant originator. The stipulation for an injunction states the plaintiff client and defendant originator agree that the online criticism is false and constitutes defamation, despite the fact that the online content is true. The stipulation asks the court to enter an order requiring websites to remove the online criticism or requiring search engines to de-index the online criticism. De-indexing removes it from the Google. Once issued by the court, the injunction is served on websites hosting the content. The filing of fraudulent and or frivolous lawsuits was or is a tactic intentionally used by respondents to achieve a client's desired outcome. Holy mackerel, that's a different kind of strategic lawsuit against public participation than I expected. Usually what we see, I'll bring it up here, usually what we see is this kind of lawsuit, where a lawsuit is filed, it's a frivolous lawsuit, it's intended just to over burden, overpower a, a defenseless defendant who has posted otherwise true criticism on the internet. And there are laws against this in various states, not in every state, 
But this is against, this is with a, a, a plaintiff who's willing to go against a defendant, a genuine defendant who has genuinely made true statements. And now this new allegation appears to be that these companies are either falsifying information or they are getting the defendant to falsely agree that the information is false when it is true. In April 2015, the court file in Kogan v. Chinook was mailed to the 11th Judicial Circuit in and for Miami-Dade County, Florida, to Kelly Warner Law at the request of the firm. The pleadings in Kogan v. Chinook alleged a reputation management company named Brand.com employed Joseph Chinook. Brand.com and Chinook were sued by plaintiff Kogan. Kogan claimed he hired Brand.com to remove certain posts from a website affiliated with one of his competitors and to optimize Kogan's online presence. Part of the optimization plan was to create a Wikipedia page, which Chinook was hired by Brand.com to complete. Kogan alleges he was defrauded by Chinook in relation to the Wikipedia page. As part of the fraud, Chinook allegedly posed as a man named Andre Spektrov. In 2016, Respondent Warner was hired by Joseph Chinook to remove allegedly defamatory posts about Chinook from the internet. At that time, Respondent Warner was already aware that Chinook was accused in Florida of fraud and using a fake identity. The allegedly defamatory posts were purported to originate from a woman named Krista Ivansky. Prior to filing the complaint on behalf of Chinook, Respondent Warner and others in the firm communicated with an individual identifying herself as Ivansky. All communication was conducted through email. No one with the firm spoke with Ivansky on the phone or in person. The email address for Ivansky was provided to the firm by Chinook. The email addresses are listed here. In June 2016, Respondent Warner filed a complaint on behalf of Joseph Chinook in Maricopa County Superior Court, Chinook v. Ivansky. Prior to filing the complaint, Respondent Warner was aware that Chinook was accused in Florida of fraud and using a fake identity. The complaint in Chinook v. Ivansky alleges that defendant Ivansky defamed plaintiff Chinook by posting 38 false statements about Chinook on the internet. The URL of each of these allegedly false statements is listed in the complaint. Respondent Warner took no action to determine if the statements were true or false before filing the lawsuit. The first URL listed in the complaint routes to a page where individuals complain about a, ch a scam run by Chinook. The page claims Chinook uses the aliases of Sarah Wood, Sarah Ward, and Patrick McDowell to run scams. The Sarah Wood email was one of the email addresses for Ivansky provided by the firm Chinook. The complaint states Ivansky resides in Turkey and Chinook resides in Colorado. The complaint states the parties purposefully availed themselves of the benefits of Arizona law, but does not explain how the state courts in Arizona have jurisdiction to hear the matter. The plaintiff's verification attached to the complaint is signed by Chinook and notarized by John William Kitchko, a notary in Fulton County, Georgia. Respondent Warner knew that Ivansky was not a real person. Ivansky was fabricated to serve as a defendant. Warner knew Ivansky did not post the 38 defamatory statements. Warner knew the 38 allegedly defamatory statements were not posted by the same person. Warner knew the legal action regarding many of the allegedly defamatory statements was barred by the statute of limitations. If Warner did not know of the information in, in the paragraphs, Respondent Warner failed to investigate the matter. In June 2016, Respondent Warner filed a document entitled Stipulation for Permanent Injunction and Dismissal Without Prejudice, ostensibly signed by Ivansky. Warner knew that Ivansky's signature was forged or failed to investigate the matter prior to filing the document. The Stipulation for Permanent Injunction and Dismissal Without Prejudice asked the court to enter a stipulated order for permanent injunction. The proposed order states that defendants shall permanently remove the statements from the web pages and plaintiffs shall not republish any applicable statements. In the event defendant is unable to remove any statement, plaintiffs may submit this order to Google and or any other applicable internet search engine so that web pages can be removed, delisted, de-indexed. The proposed order is signed by Avonsky and notarized by Amanda Sparks, a notary from Fulton County, Georgia. 
The plaintiff's verification is attached to the original complaint and signed by Chinook and also notarized in Fulton County, Georgia. According to the complaint, neither Ivansky nor Chinook reside in Georgia. There is no notary in Fulton County named Amanda Sparks. A search performed via Georgia Superior Clerk Cooperative Authority notary search shows no notary in Fulton County named Amanda Sparks. It's a forgery. Respondent Warner knew that the forgery, that the, that the notarization was a forgery. Holy mackerel. Then they go on to say that this has happened again and again and again. Samantha Pierce was a notary ID. This happened again in Ruddy v. Kirshner. They have a business relationship with Ruddy. They initiated a copyright action alleging unauthorized use of Warner's photogra photograph on ripoff report. The goal of the action was to de-index or remove a consumer complaint hosted at the following URL. The action did not result in the removal of the content. Ruddy filed a pro per lawsuit in Ruddy v. Kirshner alleging that Jake Kirshner posted false and defamatory statements. The allegedly defamatory statements were the subject of the complaint in Ruddy v. Kirshner were the same statements Respondent Warner attempted to remove by filing the copyright action. The lawsuit was fraudulent. Jake Kirshner did not post those statements. Very, very interesting. And they go on to allege this against this other attorney, Aaron Kelly, in a case called Lynn v. Wood, and another one called uh, Gattuso v. Marks, Cohen v. Smith, Varden v. Lentz, then Mr. Muhammad in Welter v. Doe, and this is signed... This is the State Bar of Arizona. This is not being filed by a person against these attorneys. This is an investigation that's been done by the State Bar of Arizona and their counsel, Bradley F. Perry. So that's a real big deal when your own State Bar files something against you like that. They're freaking serious. So what do we think of that, anyone? That sounds like the worst nightmare for a lawyer. The state bar files something against you. You're like, oh, God. Yeah, I hope so. These people deserve it, though. I mean, forging documents to, to get stuff removed from the Internet so they didn't have to go through the work of actually finding the person and sending a subpoena and all that. I get it. It's hard work. That's why it's hard work. I mean, you get paid so much. that's why it's expensive. That's what you get paid for, and that's what you're supposed to do. So they skipped all that. They basically just skipped all of that hard work and just said, oh, if we just make up a defendant and the defendant agrees, then we don't ever have to go to court and file, you know, make an adverse thing and, and file, send service and, and, and deal with an adverse plaintiff or, excuse me, adverse defendant. That's a heck of a shortcut. Holy mackerel.